Hello beautiful friends and bookish fam. My name is Brittany. Welcome back or welcome to Rescues and Reads. Today we are here to set up my July TBR. So of course we know the drill by now. Before I can get into pulling the challenges for July and into the gameplay for July, we have to kind of recap how I did in June. And to be honest, June was kind of a shit show between starting work at the Humane Society and going on vacation. My reading was very much sporadic. I didn't read nearly as much as I wanted to in June. And I definitely, definitely did not complete the Slayer Fest readathon that I wanted to do. I almost completely forgot about my own readathon in June. I hardly did anything for Slayer Fest, so that was kind of a wash, unfortunately. But I did manage to to read the majority of books that I set for myself in June so we're gonna go ahead and run through that really quickly. So the very first challenge that I pulled for myself in the month of June was to read a Rachel and Solomon that is because I wanted to read more from Rachel and Solomon in 2023 to determine whether or not I wanted to continue with her as an author. I ended up reading the X talk in June so I did satisfy that challenge. Challenge number two was to read the next book in the Eddie Flynn series by Steve Cavanaugh and in this instance it was 13. I did successfully read that in June and the final challenge was to read the next book in the Grant County series by Karen Slaughter. This was book number five, Faithless, and I did actually just finish that book. So I satisfied all three challenges that I pulled for myself. All right, now in terms of gameplay prompts, first prompt I landed on was to read a book that is on someone else's TBR. Now in my TBR video, I didn't actually make a selection for this. After the video was done, I ended up making the selection of reading The Chateau by Jacqueline Goldis, I think is her name. Now the reason why I selected this one is because it was the June book club selection for Riveting Reads Patreon, which I am a part of. And the main reason that I didn't read that in June was simply because it hasn't come in from my library. There is a several week long wait for this book at my library. Like I don't even know if it's going to be coming in in July for me to read it. I'm still not 100% sold on the idea of reading it. When I was initially looking over the synopsis, it didn't necessarily sound like something I would have grabbed on my own had it not been a book club pick. So I'm not necessarily sad that I didn't read it. And I'm not convinced enough that I do want to go ahead and read it. So I think what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to go ahead and use one of the kings that I have been stocking up for a while and I'm going to go ahead and use this to get out of jail free and not take a punishment. So I don't have to roll over the chateau into another month. This is the first time that I've used a king I think ever and I have stockpiled quite a few. So we're going to use this. Next I landed on the prompt for spring vibes and for that I had selected the X talk by Rachel and Solomon which as I mentioned I did read. Then I landed on the prompt to read a book box pick. So a book that I received from a book box. For that, I was planning on reading For Her Consideration by Amy Spalding, and I just didn't get around to it, and I really didn't want to. This is not necessarily one that I'm super intrigued to read. It was something that I picked up from Aardvark because I needed to make a selection. At the time, they didn't have the skip option, and I needed to go ahead and select it, and this was the closest thing of that month that I could find that I might be interested in reading. But since that point, it's not something that I've really looked forward to picking up. I have not been excited about it. I haven't been in the mood to read it. And so I think I'm actually going to go ahead and take a punishment on this one, and I'm going to go ahead and unhaul it because I can't see a time in the near future when I'm actually going to want to read it. So I did not satisfy this prompt and I'm going to go ahead and let this one go. Then I landed on the prompt to continue a series and for that I selected House of Sky and Breath by Sarah J Mass. I am currently in the process of reading this story. I will not finish it likely before the end of June but I should finish it not long after. I have maybe 250 pages left in it and I'm plugging away at it. I am buddy reading this with Sarah over at Sarah's Nightstand and we are working on it. We are really enjoying it and like I said I won't finish it by the end of June but I am very much well into the story and I will be finishing it soon. Then I landed on the prompt to read a book with fall vibes and for that I selected The Haunting of Ashburn House by Darcy Coates which I did read. And then the last prompt for that round of gameplay was to read a book that gave me summer vibes and for that I selected Hook, Line, and Sinker by Tessa Bailey which I also did read and finish. So now we're going to go ahead and see what's happening in July. I will say that I'm kind of deeming July somewhat of a catch-up month. There have been a lot of books that I've received primarily from Book of the Month that I haven't read yet and I'm trying to read those as they come in and I just haven't been able to do that because of Slayer Fest and so now that that's done I'm going to kind of use July as much as I can to catch up on all of the books that have come my way in the past couple of months. I'm primarily talking about the subscription books that have come my way so I'm going to try to focus on those as well as some of the books that I received as part of the monthly Facebook gifting and things like that. Just trying to get some of these books that I recently hauled read and off of my TBR since that's one of my main goals for this year as well. But first of course before we get into the gameplay 
play, we have to pull some challenges for the month of July. So let's see if the challenge cup is kind to me. Y'all, so this mug literally just started out as challenge prompts for all of the different reading challenges that I'm trying to satisfy this year. And it ended up being so much more and ended up being like all of the sequels to series that I'm in the middle of and stuff like that. So who knows if I'm going to get through all of those reading challenges because they're no longer a priority apparently as I've now lessened the likelihood that I'm going to pull those prompts from this jar. So we're going to see what it does. All right. I'm glad my mom died. Okay, so that is a nonfiction. And I actually put this prompt in here because I needed to read a book that was written by a comedian. And I know that I think her name is Jeanette Walls. I know that she's not like technically a comedian, but she was on kind of like a comedy show on Nickelodeon. And so that's why I put this in here. But I've actually since satisfied that challenge with another book, Hyperbole and a Half by Ali Brosh. And so I no longer need to read this. I never watched iCarly. So I have no investment in her as like an actress or anything like that. Although I'm sure her story is very, very important. And I'm sure that I would enjoy it if I read it but I'm not going to go ahead and go along with this one because I don't need to read this anymore all right let's see Ooh, bromance book club okay that's perfect so I need to read book two in that and I believe that's called undercover bromance if you're not familiar this is a series of romances where guys are part of this book club where they read nothing but romance books in order to kind of help figure out what women want so they can be successful in their relationships or they can get relationships or things of that nature I remember really enjoying book number one so I'm gonna go ahead and continue in this series so reading book two if I don't really enjoy my time with undercover bromance I may not continue in the series so we'll see but for now I'm happy to have this as a challenge challenge to satisfy. All right. Ooh, Atlas Paradox. Okay, this is one that I think that I want to read with my eyeballs while listening to it. I don't think that this is one that I want to read solely on audiobook just because my experience with the Atlas 6 wasn't great. I thought it was very, very, very pretentious and not in a good way. It was pretentious where everything all of you Blake said like went completely over my head. It was so sciencey and theoretical and it wasn't what I was looking for. I was really hoping for a much more dark academia tone and it just didn't give me that. I do have the Atlas Paradox and I'm gonna see how much I enjoyed that one, but I think in order to get the full experience out of it. I really do want to read it with my eyeballs and listen to it, which I cannot do right now because I am currently doing that with House of Sky and Breath. So this will be the next book that I do that with. Like I said, I should be finishing House and Sky and Breath soon. I'm not necessarily super looking forward to this one, but I pulled it so I got to read it. Now normally because I'm already reading a fantasy book, I wouldn't have kept the selection of the Atlas Paradox, but because I'm almost done with House of Sky and Breath and I really just need to get Atlas Paradox out of the way, I'm going to go ahead and keep it. But if I do pull another one, I'm going to put it right back in. Educated by Tara Westover. So this is a nonfiction. This has definitely been making the rounds over the past several years. It is a true story about a woman who kind of grew up in, I want to say like a survivalist cult type of situation. So she grew up like completely off the grid and this is her story. This is definitely going to satisfy several challenges for me. So it's not necessarily something that I was going to prioritize in July, but it'll definitely work towards challenges. So I'm going to read this one. All right. So now that the challenges have been pulled, it is time to go ahead and get into the gameplay. All right, everyone. It is it's time for the next round of the My Bad TBR game. The board is as it was left at the end of May. We're going to go ahead and do the standard six draws and see what we can get. All right, so I got four and blue. Four is a backwards movement, and I only have one blue pawn out on the board, so this guy has to move back four. One, two, three, four. Read a thriller or mystery, and I can certainly do that. All right, so the first draw was a number four and the color blue. I moved backwards four, and I landed on the prompt to read a mystery thriller. Y'all know that's an easy one for me because that's the primary genre of book that I read. For that, I'm actually going to select All the Dangerous Things by Stacey Willingham. I'm selecting this one primarily because it is the August book club selection for the Bookworm Bitches Book Club. It is a group on Goodreads that I help moderate. And oddly enough, Stacey Willingham's first novel, A Flicker in the Dark, is the July selection. And I've already read that. So I don't have to worry about reading that in July. So I can focus on this one. If I remember correctly, this follows a story about a baby who was kidnapped and the trials that the mother goes through trying to get her child back. It says, one year ago, Isabel Drake's life changed forever. Her toddler son, Mason, was taken out of his crib in the middle of the night while she and her husband were asleep in the next room. With little evidence and few leads for the police to chase, the case quickly went cold. 
school. However, Isabel cannot rest until Mason is returned literally. Except for the occasional catnap or small blackout where she loses track of time, she hasn't slept in a year. Isabel's entire existence now revolves around finding him, but she knows she can't go on this way forever. In hopes of jarring loose a new witness or a buried clue, she agrees to be interviewed by a true crime podcaster, but his interest in Isabel's past makes her nervous. His incessant questioning paired with her severe insomnia have brought up uncomfortable memories from her own childhood, making Isabel start to doubt her recollection of the night of Mason's disappearance, as well as second guess who she can trust, including herself. But she's determined to figure out the truth no matter where it leads. So I am definitely excited to get to this and I'm excited I was able to fit this in as part of my TBR game prompt. So this is going to be my mystery thriller selection for July. Okay, draw number two. All right, another four. Let's see what color I'm moving this time. All right, for some reason, this game does not want my blue little guy to be able to make it to his home base. So he's got to move back four again. One, two, three, four. True crime. Okay, I can do that one as well. Okay, and then again, I actually had a duplicate movement. I drew another number four and the color blue. So I once again had to move that poor blue pawn back four and I landed on true crime. And for that, I'm actually going to read The Phantom Prince, My Life with Ted Bundy by Elizabeth Kendall. If you're not familiar, Ted Bundy actually had a longtime girlfriend, Elizabeth. Kendall and it was a very serious relationship. She actually had a young daughter at the time who Ted Bundy was great with and then ultimately you see the progression as she starts to suspect that her Ted is the Ted that the police are looking for in regards to the disappearance and killing of a bunch of young women in the Seattle Pacific Northwest area and so this is her story. It is very very short. It is not long at all. The audiobook is probably just about three hours of listening time. I could probably bust through this in about a day and I'm really interested to kind of see her perspective so I'm nervous to hear her story. I can't even imagine what it would be like to go through knowing that you were in love with a serial killer. I can't even imagine. So I'm actually going to be reading two nonfictions in July, a true crime and then a more literary nonfiction. So it's going to be an interesting reading month for sure. All right, draw number three. Okay, so we got a king. Now it's been a couple rounds since I've gotten a king, but I do still have a few others saved up and this is basically a get out of jail free card. So I'm gonna hang on to it, put it with the other kings and I don't have to select a book for this one. All right, then next I drew a king and y'all know that is a get out of jail free card. So it's being added to my other stack of kings to pull out for when I fail a TBR. So no book was selected for that one. Draw number four. Okay, ace. So this is one where I either have to move forward one or I can move one of my pawns out of start. Now I only have blue and yellow in start. So if I get a red or a green, that's not gonna help me too terribly much, but we'll see what we can do. And of course it's one that doesn't need to be moved out of start. So let's go ahead and move one of these red pawns one. So if I do this one, that would be book box. And then over there, it looks like it is diverse read. Um, I'm actually gonna do this because I actually have a lot of books on my TBR that I really need to read for July that came from a book box. So that will just make it a lot easier. Then I drew an ace and the color red. I moved one of my red pawns forward one and landed on the book box prompt, which again is fantastic since I'm considering July July, a catch-up month of sorts. For this, I'm going to be reading The Last Word by Taylor Adams. This is one of the more recent selections from Book of the Month. It's one of my most anticipated releases of the year and I'm excited to get to it. Y'all know that I'm a huge fan of No Exit by Taylor Adams. This is another story that is set kind of in isolation. This time it is set in the Pacific Northwest and it follows a woman who is house sitting in this cabin in isolation, just her and her dog. And basically one day she reads this horror novel and she absolutely hates it. She gives it a scathing one-star review and she actually finds herself in an argument with the author of this book. It's very unusual. It's very unsettling. And she finds out that this author has actually written multiple other books that are very dark and very, very disturbing. So much so that she thinks there could be something wrong with this author. And then some very unusual and sinister things start happening around her. And she starts to think that potentially the author is going to take it a step further because of her review. So I am, I am super, super hyped to be getting to this one. I cannot wait. All right, draw number five. Okay, so here's one where I could potentially get another pawn out of start, but I also have to draw again because it was a two. So let's see what I'm doing with the two and then we will draw again. 
All right, this game also does not want me to get my blue or yellow pawns out from start. So since green is not in the start, I can only move them forward. So if I move this guy forward one or two, that is name, number, or place. So that means I have to read a book with a name, number, or place in the title. And if I move that guy to, it lands on emoji. And I haven't actually formally changed it on the board, but I did change that prompt to viewer pick. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and move this guy forward too because I have a couple of books that I want to read pretty soon that have names in them. So we're gonna go with that. All right, then I drew a number two and the color green. I landed on the prompt to read a book with either a name, number, or place in the title. I actually have two options for this, but I think I'm leaning towards The 100 Years of Lenny and Margot. This was one of the books that I received as part of that monthly Facebook gifting group that I'm a part of. I have definitely been trying to read these as they come in. I had this on my radar for June and it actually came in from my library in June, but I wasn't in the mood for a heavier story because I was going on vacation. I wanted kind of something light and fluffy and mindless, and that's not what this is. This follows our two main characters, Lenny and Margot. Lenny is 17 and Margot is 83, but they both have something in common in that they are dying. They are both, I believe, in hospice care. And together, these two strike up an unlikely but very memorable and important friendship. And they get together and they kind of decide to document their combined total of 100 years of life via art. And I think that this is just going to be so incredibly beautiful, but raw and hard hitting. I imagine that this book is going to make me cry. It's going to deal with grief. And I have to be in the bright emotional mindset in order to read this story, but I do want to read it. I've heard phenomenal things about this, and I think that it's going to be the harder hitting read that I look for. Oddly enough, the other book that I have here that has a name in it is also one that deals heavily with grief and death, The Collected Regrets of Clover by Mickey Brammer, another recent book of the month selection that I definitely need to get to. This should be coming in from my library relatively soon, so if it does, I will certainly be reading this, and it will absolutely be satisfying that prompt as well. But this follows a death doula named Clover. So she has basically dedicated her life to helping people who are in hospice, who are dying, who need somebody there with them and that is her and I just believe that takes such a special kind of person but it's also about Clover's own journey as she kind of tries to discover herself and what she wants for her life and so I think that this is just going to be phenomenal as well and I'm excited to get to this one although I know it's going to be heavier topics as well because there's going to be a lot of death in here and so this will certainly be one that I read in July if it comes in from my library that's why I'm going ahead and mentioning it here okay draw number six All right, so moving one of my red guys forward six, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, husband pick, always dangerous. And then over there, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, start a series. I certainly do not need to be doing that. So we are going to do one, two, three, four, five, six, husband pick. All right, then I drew a number six and the color red, and this was a husband pick. So I had my husband come in here to my physical TBR shelf and pick two books so that I could select one of them. The first book that he selected was Forging Silver into Stars by Bridget Kemmerer. That was a book that was set in the same world as her A Curse of Dark and Lonely trilogy. And I really wasn't in the mood to read that one, especially since I'm already reading a uh, fantasy. But he also selected one that I'm extremely excited about, A Blizzard of Polar Bears by Alice Henderson. Y'all know how much I absolutely adored A Solitude of Wolverines. It is now one of my favorite wintry isolation thrillers of all time. I just thought it was so well crafted and well done. It follows Dr. Alex Carter. She is a wildlife biologist as she's going to this very isolated spot in Montana to study wolverines. And while she's there, there are some very sinister things start to happen on the nature preserve where she is. She's all alone out there. And then those things start to come for her. And it really is a survival story. This is a completely separate story. Like it's not set in the same area. Let me read through the synopsis of this really quick and make sure that by reading it, I'm not spoiling anything. Okay, so I should be good to read this. Fresh off her wolverine study in Montana, wildlife biologist Alex Carter lands a job studying threatened population of polar bears in the Canadian Arctic. Embedded with a small team of Arctic researchers, she tracks the majestic bears by air, following them over vast snowy terrain, spending days leaning precariously out of a helicopter with a tranquilizer gun until she can get down on the ice to examine them up close. But as her study progresses and she gathers data on the health of individual bears, things start to go awry. Her helicopter pilot quits unexpectedly, equipment goes missing, and a late night intruder breaks into her lab and steals the samples she's collected. Alex realizes that someone doesn't want her to complete her study, but she is not easily deterred. Managing to find a replacement pilot, she returns to the icy expanses of Hudson Bay, but the helicopter catches fire mid-flight, forcing the team to land on a vast sheet of White, far from civilization. Surviving on the frozen landscape is difficult enough, but as armed assailants on snowmobiles close in, Alex must rely on her skills and tenacity to survive this onslaught and carry out her mission. I am here for it. I'm really excited to see what Alice Henderson does now with Dr. Alex Carter. I'm just very, very excited to finally be getting to this one. All right, and then the very final draw of this round another ace. Okay, let's see if I can actually get one of these other pawns out on the board. 
Hooray. All right, so I'm going to move this guy out here and that's a free space so I do not have to select a book so I didn't actually have to add anything additional onto my TBR. And then the very final draw for this game was another ace and the color blue and this time I was able to get one of my blue pawns from start out onto the playing field. It goes out onto a free space so no book was chosen for that one. All right y'all that is it. Those are all the books that I'm formally putting on my July TBR but I do have a couple of other books that are going to be priorities in July if they come in from my library. Again these are things that were recently sent to me and I really just need to go ahead and get to them. First, I have The Rose Code by Kate Quinn. She is a chonker, y'all. I had no idea this book was so thick. This was the book that was recently sent to me as part of the monthly Facebook gifting group for June. So I have this on hold at my library. I don't know how quickly it's going to come in, but if it does come in, I'm absolutely going to read it. Kate Quinn is a historical fiction author that I have come to enjoy with the Alice Network, and I believe this also deals in some way with female spies. Yeah, it says, Kate Quinn returns with another heart-stopping World War II story involving three female code breakers at Bletchley Park and the spy they must uncover after the war is over. So I'm all about badass females during World War II helping to possibly thwart the Nazi effort. It just sounds absolutely fantastic to me. So this is one that I will read in July if I'm able to, if it comes in from my library. I also have The Only Survivors by Megan Miranda. This is one that actually just came in from my library and I think I might be able to fit it in before the end of June if I'm able to finish the one that I'm currently reading within the next day or two. So we are going to see, but if I don't finish it in June, it is certainly going to be read in July because I have to, or I'm going to have to return it to my library but this is the newest release from Megan Miranda. It's kind of somewhat a dark academia twist although I believe the crime in this that happened in the past happened in a high school and not a college. I'm interested to see what she can do. Megan Miranda is very hit or miss for me but I typically always have a decently entertaining time with her stories so we're gonna see. And the very last one that I have on my radar for July, Hello Beautiful by Anne Napolitano. This was the very last book that I selected as part of my authentic books subscription. This is actually one that I'm very interested in reading. It sounds like it's going to be a very character driven kind of family drama. I've never read anything by Anne Napolitano but I heard great things about Dear Edward so this is being added to the stack. All right y'all that is my very ambitious TBR for July. If I'm not able to complete this TBR that's fine. I have a lot of kings available to me to avoid punishment or I might just take a punishment and roll them over into August because I do need to get these read. Please comment down below and let me know what you think of the TBR that I set for myself for July. Are there any of these books that you loved or hated and what do you think I'm going to feel about these stories? Or if you would like please actually go ahead and comment a rose emoji for the rose code if you made it to the end of this video or is there a polar bear emoji leave me a polar bear or like a blizzard emoji for a blizzard of polar bears by alice henderson because i am super excited to get to that one and as always if you like this video or if you just like me please be sure to give this a big thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already i try to post one video a week sometimes two depending on what i can do and i would sure love to see you in one of those next videos bye guys